Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about exponential functions uh, and graphs of exponential functions and various translations to the exponential function. So in general, an exponential function is modeled by f of x equals ab to the x. Notice our power has a variable in it. Uh, that's the difference from some of the other equations that you've graphed or even solved for. And later on in the course we'll talk about solving exponential equations. Um, if our value of b is greater than 1, that's going to be an exponential growth function. Um, and if our value of b is a fraction between 0 and 1, that's going to be uh, a net called exponential decay. That's called exponential decay. And if we have an exponential growth function, or a function that models exponential growth, this is what that graph is going to look like. It's going to start almost hugging the x-axis, and it's going to, going to exponentially grow. If it's exponential decay, it's going to start really high, and it's going to come really low and hug this x-axis here. All right? Because I'm using the words hugging these x-axes, it's almost like I'm thinking about it as an asymptote, and that is true. There is a horizontal asymptote in both of these cases, uh, and that's when um, it either grows, it starts really, really low, toward, hug, hugs the x-axis and increases, or it decreases and hugs the x-axis. So our horizontal asymptote is at the line f of x equals 0 or y equals 0. These functions will not have a vertical asymptote. So there is no vertical asymptote. Right? And to be 100% honest, if we were to graph these, the easiest way to graph it is to use a table of values. Using a table of values is the best way to solve these types of equations. Now, or not to solve, to graph these types of equations. Now let's talk about how we can move this graph right, left, up, down, flip it, and so forth. Okay? If we have the function f of x equals ab to the x minus h plus k, what do these values do? Let's talk about the values of a, h, and k. The value of a, that's going to tell you if it's going to stay on top of the x-axis or if it's going to flip on the uh, x-axis. Um, if this value of b is positive and a is negative, our graph is going to flip on the x-axis. This value of h, that's going to shift this graph horizontally, and k is going to shift the graph vertically. So those are our translations. So if I were to, were to say, if we were, I were to say, hey, look at this function here, f of x equals 2 to the x and g of x equals negative 3 times 2 to the x plus 1 plus 3. This function g of x, first off, it's shifting the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x. One unit to the left, three units up, and then it's going to flip the graph because our value of a is negative. It's going to flip it over the horizontal asymptote. Now, because our horizontal asymptote in this case is y equals 0, well, we're adding something on here. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at this value here, whatever k is. Okay. So our horizontal asymptote in this case is at f of x equals k or y equals k. And we'll do a couple of graphs to talk about uh, some of these, okay? And so let's look at this function here, f of x equals 2 to the x. Um, first off, this is just a basic uh, exponential function here. There is no translations left to right, and there is no flips. So this function here is essentially considered a 
quote, parent function. If we were to translate this, the translations would refer back to this function here. So if we look at this, okay, there is no vertical shift, there is no horizontal shift, so our horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be f of x equals zero. All right? Now, our value of b is greater than one. So it's going to be exponential growth. If this were a fraction between zero and one, it would be exponential decay. Okay? So remember what exponential growth looks like. That, that looks like, in general, in general, exponential growth is going to look like that. Okay? But we don't really need to know that because that's early, so was stated earlier in the video. Okay? And what we're going to do to graph these, we're going to use a table of values here for x and f of x. All right, and we're going to pick some nice values for x. Some nice values for x are like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we'll evaluate f of x at each of these. So if we substitute negative 3 in for 2 to the x, that's going to be 2 to the negative 3. That's going to be really 1 over 2 thirds because of our negative exponent property. And 1 over 2 to the, thir the third is 1 to the eighth, or 0.125. So our first point here is negative 3, neg uh, 1.25. That's going to be right around there. If we do neg negative 2, we get 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 2 squared which is one-fourth, and hopefully we all know that's 0.25, so that's going to be here again. Negative one is two to the negative one, which is one over two, which is one-half. So that's going to be right about there. Two to the zeroth is one, so there's another point right there. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. And 2 to the third is 8. Alright, so you can see through graphing here, our points tend to travel upward. And we can graph, and we graph it. All right. And there's our graph. Now, some interesting facts here that we'll state. We'll state some domain and range stuff. Our domain Our domain, we can pick any value for x, so our domain is all real numbers. Our range, our values of y. They are going to be greater than the value of our asymptote is our its exponential growth. So we will use the inequality greater than. So y is greater than our asymptote, which is at zero. So our range is y is greater than zero. All right, so that's a basic exponential growth function. Now let's talk about a an exponential decay function. All right, let's talk about the graph of an exponential decay function, or a function that models exponential decay. All right, our value of b here is one-third, so that is going to be exponential decay. And if you need to go back in the video to know what the graph of an exponential decay function looks like, um, then certainly uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, also, there is no horizontal shift in this, so our horizontal asymptote our 
horizontal asymptote is at the x-axis, is at f of x equals 0. Okay? And then, again, to graph this, we're going to use a table of values here to evaluate f, to evaluate f of x at x. Right? So, for this, um, I'm going to pick the values, say, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Right? When we evaluate f of x at negative 2, um, that's going to be one-third to the negative 2. That's going to flip the numerator and denominator because of the negative exponent and turn, turn the exponent positive. So we really get 3 squared. One-third of the negative 2 is really 3 squared, which is 9. When we evaluate one-third to the negative 1 first power, that's really going to be 3. When we evaluate anything to the zeroth power, we get 1. And we do one-third to the first, that's going to be one-third. And one-third squared, one squared is one, three squared is nine, so we get one-ninth out of that. So our points here are right there. And we can graph more points if we want, or evaluate more, evaluate the function f of x at more values. Uh, if you want, but we really don't have to. We can take and graph that function just like that. Okay? And that's what that function f of x equals one third of the x will look like. Uh, some domain and range stuff. Right? Our domain of the function f of x is going still going to be all real numbers, and our range is going to be y is greater than 0. Okay? So that's the graph of an exponential decay function, or a function that models exponential decay. Okay? The next example we do is going to be a translation of a couple different, uh, of, a, of, an, exponential, of a, an exponential function. Alright, so, let's look at this graph here. We have or this function here, f of x equals negative 2 times 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2. All right? In this case, our parent, our parent function, all right, I'm going to put the parent in quotations, is going to be, let's, let's keep it as f of x, as, uh, let's call it g of x equals 3 to the x, okay? Our parent function is going to be 3 to the x, okay? Because our base here of the exponent is 3, all right? Everything else that we're, what we're going to do with the negative 2, the minus 1, and the plus 2 here is going to be a translation of this function right here. So if we were to graph that function there, this is what we would get. would be the function that we would get if we were to graph g of x, okay? Instead, we're asked to graph f of x, okay? In this case here, let's look at our vertical shift first, okay? Our vertical shift is plus 2. So that means we're going to shift this graph up 2 units, All right? So that means our horizontal asymptote is now going to be up two units. All right, so our, ver our horizontal asymptote of the function f of x is going to be at f of x equals two. So I'll graph that. Okay, I'm actually going to get rid of this graph for now, and I'll come back later to it. Just just think of that graph as a reference. Uh, for what we're about to do. Okay? So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at f of x equals 2. So that's going to be right here. We'll mark that in our graph. Okay? 
Now let's look at some, some of the other translations here. This x minus 1, that's going to shift this graph here one unit to the right. So our, our horizontal shift Notice horizontal shift and asymptote are completely different things. All right, that's going to be one unit to the right. Our vertical shift we established it's going to be two because that's where our asymptote is going to be. That's going to be two units up. And now what does this value of a do? Negative two. All right, this negative two. That tells us that it's going to be scaled by a factor of 2, and it's going to be flipped across the uh, horizontal asymptote. All right? It's going to flip g of x equals 3x along the horizontal asymptote. Okay? So, Let's look at some nice points here for this. Some nice points here because this graph is going to be coming down this way. Let's think of some really nice points here. Um, let's go x, y, or x and f of x. Some nice points here. Let's think about what, well, what, what happens when this is 0. Uh, well, that's going to be a 1. And we'll go 0, negative 1, and we'll go with 2 and 3. Okay? Well, when x is 1, right, we get negative 2 times 3 to the 1 minus 1 plus 2. 3 to the 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 to the 1 minus 1 is 3 to the 0, which is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Plus 2 is 0. So our value of x when it's 1, f of x is 0. So that's going to be right there. Well, what about when x is 2? We get negative 2 times 3 to the 2 minus 1 plus 2. 2 minus 1, our exponent, think of order of operations here, is 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. That'll be right about here. If we did a 3 here, negative 2 times 3 to the 3 minus 1 plus 2, that's going to turn into 3 squared, which is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, plus 2 is negative 16. That's going to be somewhere way down here, so I'm not going to worry about graphing it. And now let's look at 0 and negative 1 here. If we do f, if we do negative 2 times 3 to the 0 minus 1 plus 2, 3 to the 0 minus 1 is 3 to the negative 1, which is uh, going to be 1 third times negative 2 is negative 2 thirds plus 2, negative 2 thirds, plus 2, that's going to be 6 over 3, which is going to be a positive 4 thirds, so that'll be right about there. And negative 1 here, negative 2 times 3 to the negative 1 minus 1, plus 2, negative 3 to the negative 1 minus 1 is 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the power of negative 2, is going to turn into a one ninth by properties of exponents. Negative one ninth times, or one ninth times negative two is negative two ninths plus two. That's going to be plus eighteen over nine. It is going to turn into uh, sixteen ninths. It's going to turn into sixteen ninths, which is just under two is right there. And if we were to graph even more points, this way it would be it would come as close to that horizontal asymptote as possible. So here is the graph of that function right there. Okay?
and we could also state some facts about the domain and range here. Our domain, all real numbers. Our range, let's look at our horizontal asymptote. It's at 2, so we'll put a 2 here. Is Are the, the values of y or f of x less than our the value of our asymptote, or are they greater than the value of our asymptote? They are less than the value of our asymptote, so our inequality there is going to be y is less than 2. Okay? And that's the graph of uh, an exponential function with a translation there. Basically, this function 3 to the x, if we, if we graph it, if I re-graph it, I regraph it, what we did was we moved it to the right one unit, flipped it on the y-axis because of the negative 2, and then we brought it up two units vertically. Okay, so that's how that's the basics of graphing these exponential functions. Hopefully, you get something out of this video. Um, thank you for watching.